here on Swag Radio with the Brown Eyed Girl Show. So we're talking to you about obstacles. And so I gave y'all that encouraging word, but I still got more for y'all. But uh, right now, we gonna, we have uh, Mo McCoy here with us. He's a filmmaker with Fireproof TV Films. So how you doing? Yes, I'm doing great. Good. Yeah. So, so uh, before, before we go, go any further, what I want to ask with the topic being in obstacles, what obstacles have you faced? was starting your fan company. Oh man, uh, let's, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Obstacles are a part of the business that I'm in. That's, you know, I had to overcome obstacles every single film that I've done. Um, so I'm going to just take you back. I don't, I'm not going to go way back. I'm just going to go back about seven years when I started my path down to the filmmaking okay and uh it's like every movie has something that you have to go through to make it like because you're creating and um so one of the first obstacles is you know i would do a casting call Mm -hmm. and then you know two people would show up how you make a movie with three people (laughs) so yeah yeah so (laughs) Um, I would go on the radio, TV, I, I promote, promote hard internet, flyers, posters, let people know I'm doing a movie, and then two people came, you know, so that, that could make the average person want to quit, but I didn't quit, I just said, you know, let's make a movie, <laughs> right. with these couple people, and then um, other people, I just, you know, start grabbing some of my family members, and and I started grabbing, you know, friends of mine that, you know, wasn't really into acting, but put them into the film. So, uh, so though, that's one I have every time we do a movie. You know, now we get 300 people at a casting call. So it's just like night and day. But it, you know, the beginning movies, it was just hard getting people to come and understand what you're doing. Right. And then so I moved to Houston and I had another casting call and then 11 people came. But those 11 people were a videographer, an editor, the star of my movie. He looked just like, um, the, <laughs> speaking of the movie, the Tickler horror film, um, it's a comedy. And my son, Jalen McCoy, drew a picture. I, I said, uh, I, I want to make a... Um, a Halloween film because the uh, some very important people told me that to make a Halloween movie is the best movie where people kind of would come see movies. So okay. we uh, we came up with the tickler, and he he was a uh, a boy who got bullied when he was a kid, and then uh, then he grew up and became uh, <clears throat> he he would go to comedy shows and comedians would. Would uh, talk about him so bad that he would go home and paint his face and come back and he would kill the comedians by tickling them to death. Oh wow! So that's where the tickler came from. But what when I uh, when I cast it, all I had was a, a picture, a drawn picture that my son made, and uh, one of those eleven people that came in looked just like. The picture. <laughs> so I was like, uh, bless you. Uh, I was like, wow, you know, you don't have everything you want, but you can, you'll have everything you need. So all I really needed was the tickler for that movie. <laughs> but then I started casting comedians. I, I would go around to comedy shows all over Houston. And then, um, and I would cast comedians like, my bro, Little T, he he's a funny comedian. So I, I said, man, I got to get you in this movie. And, uh, you know, my communication skills all ain't all the best, wasn't all the best back then. And I didn't know how to tell people I wanted them in my movie. Right. <laughs> Except for do a casting call, but nobody would show up. So I just asked them to be in it. We were in San Antonio doing a, a comedy show, one of his comedy shows. And, and we went back to a friend's house and... We filmed this part right there, 
So we, uh, I just started getting cre- more creative with, with my filming. Um, and so I, I end up getting that movie done. And uh, that's why I'm out here. I'm promoting the premiere of, of this film and two other films that I got coming out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, most definitely. So obviously he had to move. I mean, he started with his casting calls small as his obstacle and the more that he moved and, and, and got and it was able to get the word out and his casting calls grew bigger. See mm-hmm. that look at God on all that. Yeah. Look at no, God on all okay, that. Okay, check this out. <laughs> One on my first film that I made, it was called Tomorrow's Never Promised. Okay. I I took it back home uh to Grand Rapids, Michigan and to the neighborhood I was born in, Highland. Um uh, I did it right on Highland in college. I went to all the neighbors. I gave them paperwork that said I was doing a film. I asked their permission. They all gave their permission. They all came out. We were out there shooting a beautiful movie with the people in the neighborhood. It was 100 people out there. And um, I had the cranes, everything. And the police pulled up. And they, they said, what's going on here? It was beautiful, all of us working together. And uh, uh, they said, what's going on here? I said, I'm a filmmaker. I'm making a film. Here's my permits. Boom, boom, boom. I gave them everything. Right. And they tore him up and said, get out of here. He took some people to jail and made everybody leave. And it, it was just real discouraging, you know, that that happened. But I said, uh, you know, God just gave me another day to try again. So what I did was I just took my cameras. I didn't announce anything. I just went and started filming again. And this time the police came and they said, uh, what are you doing? I'm, I said, I'm making a movie. I'm trying to make a movie. Right. <laughs> and, they, and they said, they said, oh, okay, go ahead. And wow. I just, uh, and I finished up the movie. We premiered it in Michigan. I mean, in Grand Rapids, Michigan at Studio 28. And uh, the whole city came out, and that's kind of where I found my passion is watching, you know, something we worked so hard on, and and we put it on the big screen, and people came out, watched it, they laughed, and and then they gave us a standing ovation, and then that's where I really kind of found my passion in filmmaking. It's like, man, I got all these people to work together on one project, and then we we put it together, and it's now it's on the big screen. And then I did it again, and I made a movie called um, The Perfect Romance with uh, with um, all the people in my city, like uh, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Brandon Crayshawn, Nisha Nichols, um, Kendra Couture, Mr. 1204, Lacey Jones, Robert S. I put together a great cast, and... We made that in 2014. Then we premiered it in five different theaters across West Michigan. And um, you know, all all of those were sold out, every single one of them. And then um, I took that movie to Houston with me, and I was just selling it on DVD by hand and just kept pushing it. And I said, I, I, I want to get it in Walmart. So I started calling Walmart and trying to figure out how to get my product in Walmart. Right. And... Uh, and I was going back and forth with them and they were showing me the process and it was, you know, you needed money, you needed this and that. And, uh, you know, I was checking things off my list. And then my, my uh, stepdad, David Walker, he owns um, a company called DVD Time where he frames blackness and he, he, uh, he only um, sells black DVDs. And, you know, it's a website called DVD um, Time. Dot com and uh he told me why don't you check out Maverick Films so he showed me some of the movies that he sell and on the back it says Maverick Films and I saw another movie Maverick Films Maverick Films I said all right so I called Maverick Films and I I got a, I got the CEO on the line when I called and his name was Doug Schwabs and uh I was telling him that I was a filmmaker and uh I want to make a um, hundred movies. And he was like, oh man, that's great. 
He said, I've made 800. <laughs> I was, he was like, what are some more of your goals? I was like, well, I want to get the product in Walmart. He was like, man, I got 100 products in Walmart. <laughs> and so I was kind of excited because now uh, I thought I had so much work ahead of me. But it's like God made a connection for us. And um, now my my movie went to Walmart coast to coast. I was able to, I travel a lot, so I was able to pull up into the, you know, different Walmarts where I wouldn't expect it to be, and it was there, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and so I was like, man, that, that, you know, only God could do something like that, you know, to overcome all those obstacles to get it on to go worldwide, you know, and it's, it's still available right now on Amazon Prime. You can watch it, it's called The Perfect Romance. But then I, I went on to make the Tickler horror film, Angel horror film. It's about a, a black family that um, deals with a lot of adversity and overcomes it, you know. Um, and so uh, when I made that movie, my ho- I had two car accidents. My house burned down. I lost my house, my next house to Hurricane Harvey. Oh, wow. And I still made the movie. Wow. Still made it. We lost some of the footage, <laughs> but we shot so much. We shot a lot to that movie, and that's the second movie that's coming out. Uh, Angel Horror Film is produced by Baby Paul, the Grammy nominated producer. And, you know, I got all, all the people that, you know, wanted to work with me in that film, and all my friends and family, you know. Um, that I uh, met in Houston, and we had a GoFundMe. With, you know, that movie cost me fifty grand, and I had to figure out how to fund the movie. <laughs> oh wow! Of course, I didn't have fifty grand, so I I tried to study <clears throat> crowdfunding, and I came across Kickstarter. I tried a Kickstarter, and I didn't raise one dollar. And then I said, okay, I'm not gonna give up. So I tried GoFundMe, and I just pushed it every day, every day. And we raised five grand on on GoFundMe, and they ended up giving me an award for that. And then uh, I uh, I took that money and fed the crew with it. <laughs> oh. I, had, I had local... Um, hey, the crew got to get fed now. You, oh, you can't have no hungry <laughs> actors. You can't have hungry <laughs> actors. <laughs> you want to die, you let your actors get hungry. <laughs> But, I mean, obviously, there were, as you said, there was many obstacles that you faced. And and coming within those obstacles, you were led into a path of people to help you direct that. So, God is always in our our favor, and he was definitely in your favor. And you always just got to keep the faith. Yep, and I always say, you just got to remember, man, uh, every day is a new day new it's a new day you know what i'm saying yeah. you can take that new day and do whatever you want exactly. if you it, it don't matter what the problem is or the issue it's already been overcome it's already been the the problem has already been solved so all you got to do is think through it the, the the first step of thinking through a major major problem go to sleep right wake up god wake you up another day Hey, that's a blessing already. You got another day, a whole another day to do it again, to try again, to make it right. Exactly. You know what I mean? To do what you got to do. So, to, just don't feel like you got you you can build a wall with one brick. <laughs> you can't. It's not a wall. It's just a brick. But if you add a whole bunch of bricks together, right? You can make a wall. And then you can make a house. <laughs> right, exactly. You can make a skyscraper. Look downtown Detroit, GM, <laughs> way up there. You yeah, know, we gotta that remember. was an idea. We got to remember. Yeah. Anything that we want to do, we can do it. Yeah. We can do anything through Christ who strengthens us. We just have to remember that. Fact. And that's one scripture that you will hear me say the most. Because we can't do anything without him. We can't. So... We, we got to just take a look at the obstacles and, uh, of what we go through. And then, because later, later in life, uh, when we come, as, you, as he's telling his story, 
he 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 overcame those obstacles, and now he's in he's being successful in his craft. Of course, those other obstacles are gonna come along, but he know how to deal with them. Mm-hmm. You'll know how to deal with them as they come uh, come along, and it's not it's like it, it's it's there to help help uh, keep keep bringing you up. Mm-hmm. So when as more of those obstacles come up, you be like, oh, not this again. Okay, we dealt this the last time. Yeah. Okay. But that get that goes to say too. Sometimes, what will work in one situation may not may not always work in another situation. Yeah. That other situation that it may not work on, uh, we may have to come back up and revisit that plan, reconstruct that plan, so we can be able to do it. So we gonna take a small break and we gonna get into some music, and uh, we'll be right back on Brown Brown Eyed Girl Radio. Yay. <laughs> Shout out to the Cash Fetty Street team. <laughs> yeah. King Zeus. Yo. Promo Queen. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your girl on the knee. I got Mo McCoy in here, filmmaker. We getting it down here. Swag Radio, Swag Nation, baby. Yeah, yeah. come see my movies. Yeah. I got movies coming. Yep. Three movies in a row. Yep. We talking about talking about obstacles on the day and we all face with those obstacles and I, I, I just had to bring it to you because before I even started the show there were so many obstacles that I had faced just before, uh, before I even did it so I, I definitely got through a lot and I'm here today bringing y'all this show how about that <laughs>